What follows are some snatches from BBC TV films that I made in Vietnam and Cambodia in 1970 and 71. I apologise for my broadcasting voice almost half a century ago, but I hope the clips will give some flavour of the work of a very green young reporter near the back end of the war. This, this is the war in Cambodia. It's also the first attempt the Cambodian army have made to recapture the critical Nuk Long ferry about six miles up the road down here. The Viet Cong captured it on Sunday and today the Cambodian army have been advancing up the road hampered by roadblocks and the road being blown in several places by the Viet Cong. Now they met the Viet Cong in some force for the first time. In the last few weeks, the Cambodian army hasn't seemed very anxious to fight. But today, whether they like it or not, they've got to fight. Somewhere down in Saigon, there's supposed to be a battery of generals who are dictating the manner in which the Vietnam War is being fought. But never in history has any army had to thrust so much responsibility for its very survival on the manner in which the men on the ground conduct themselves. Three years ago, here at My Lai, Lieutenant William Kelly of the Americal Division showed what happens when that responsibility collapses. All that's left of the place now is a tangle of foliage and booby traps. The war has moved on. But for the company commander in Vietnam, the man on the spot, the dilemmas that created the crisis of Lieutenant Kelly are still very much the same. For many months now, the focal points of this war have been the scores of scattered fire bases dotted across the dirt and jungle the length of Vietnam. Firebase West, here in the center of the country, 30 miles north of My Lai, is the headquarters of a battalion of Cali's old division, the Americal. Although after the bombardment of unhappy publicity that's followed it through the last few months, they've now turned to calling it the 23rd. But the 600 men who were based at Firebase West don't see very much of it. For most of their several months tour here, it's just a voice on the radio calling out to them across the jungle. Only a few minutes helicopter time separates West from its fighting companies whose areas of operation extend across several miles of blue hill and green scrub. But for a group of 70 men bivouacked in the empty bush on the fourth day of a two-week patrol sweep, their own feet are the only transport they'll get until it's over. For the next fortnight, Alpha Company of the 4th 31st Regiment are on their own in the Hep Duck Valley. Alpha Company is here to try to prevent the Viet Cong from moving men and supplies through their area by day or night. They have three platoons spread out across the valley, each one moving out every day on a long series of hot hikes along the jungle trails that start as they end at some sticky map reference. Remember, keep it spread out. Keep your eyes to the front. Watch out to the flanks. Okay, make sure you keep your eyes open for booby traps up there. The company's commander, Lieutenant David Borison, has been in the army eight years and worked his way to a commission through the ranks. Hey, Long, when we get into the bill up there, you watch. Talk to the mama signs if necessary. He's a professional soldier to his fingertips, but he's commanding men, three quarters of whom are conscripts. Most of them want no more part of this war. Nobody wants to die for a dying cause, and these men can't see much percentage anymore for themselves or for America in the Hep Duck Valley. It's too hot, too dirty, and even the ground under their feet is too full of dangerous surprises. What sort of booby traps do you get around here mostly? Okay, what do they use? They do. Yeah. 
to take one of our smoke grenades. Yeah, okay, what they do is take one of our smoke grenades and they take this firing pin and they pull it back and lock it back in here and put a pin through it. And they put a little piece of explosive, composition explosive in here and they find either one of our old, old grenades such as this yeah. and take this fuse well and, and replace this one, which is a delay. They put it in here and put a and uh, have a string, tie a string to the pin, straighten these out, and, and put it, tie it down here underneath a piece of bush, and tie it up to another bush as the GI walks across. It pulls the pin out, has an automatic, uh, it fires immediately. Have your company run into many of these? Yes, certainly have. Got much damage? Yes, very much. It's the constant nagging fear and suspicion that booby traps breed that puts men on edge and creates dangerous moves. It's the booby trap on the edge of a Vietnamese village that inspires the urge to hit back at anything in sight. I want to get some artillery right in that draw right up there for, uh, I just want to recon by fire. How about give me O5s and uh, see if you can work up some 5.5s five for later. Okay, that good will be about 8.13. Two, six, five. Okay. Hip Duck has been officially Four, one, declared two, a free fire zone. Okay, and that means there. that because all civilians are supposed to have been cleared out of here, anything that moves is to be shot up on sight. And everywhere that Alpha Company goes, they're calling up artillery to frighten anything in front of them. Direction, five, six hundred, approximately, zero, nine or hundred. A first round Willie Pete on the deck. Give me a platoon one in adjustment and a battery two in effect. Over. Just bring you down there into that little valley there? Yeah, I just... I'll explain a little bit later exactly for the repeat. Uh, Roger, understand. Battery 1. 2208, understand. Battery 1 shot out. There might be short rounds. Uh, 2222, two, two, two. this is 08, fire for effect, over. Last night, the company observation post picked out a sampan moving up the river. They called down 30 rounds of heavy artillery fire on it, making it a pretty expensive sampan by any standards. And even then, it's doubtful if they sank it. But around here, when you've thrown enough explosive at something, you count it as destroyed because you can't imagine how it could have survived. In Hep Duck, it's at Lieutenant Borison's sole discretion whether anything from an elephant to a group of distant figures on the skyline gets blown to hell. Mostly, he believes in firing first and finding out what it was later. Okay, now what all is it going to take to, to put it up further up that draw there? Okay, why don't you give him an up? And an ad, record his target, okay, and then we'll... From, from the final... Right. Here he comes. <laughs> Looks good. Looks damn good. This patrol gets back to camp, having seen precisely nothing. Sometimes there's hot food waiting. More often, not. You can clean your weapon. You can sleep. You can read the latest word on how America is appreciating one aspect of this war, or even try to get to know your enemy a bit better. Mostly, you just sit. We are the unwilling, led by the unqualified, doing the impossible for the ungrateful, reads the inscription on one man's lighter. And that's by way of becoming the motto of this army. This is the American Forces Vietnam Network.
shots hurt. We all know that. There is something that hurts worse, though. The diseases you can get if you don't keep your shop record up to date. Sometimes the disease may not only hurt, it may kill. Be careful. Know where your shop record is and keep it up to date. Alpha Company is fighting a battle that's much too boring to be exciting, but much too dangerous to be relaxing. You've been out here quite a few months now. Have you felt what you've been doing here is worthwhile? Uh, sometimes yes, but the majority of the times no. Why? Well, like like today or the past few days. We've just kind of wandered around here and haven't done anything. I suppose Higher Higher has a plan, but it's not obvious to us, and they haven't made it known to us what we're doing here. We're just here. We move from this point to that point. How much enthusiasm is there now for making contact? Very, very little. Nobody wants, everybody just wants to go home in one piece. And if they kill somebody, I think they just kind of break up mentally now. Because there's nothing going on really over here, where we're at anyway, you know, just walking do think, around. Do you think that for any of the units um, around Vietnam, that if they hear there's an NBA regiment around your area, is there much enthusiasm for going out to look for it or? Yeah. No, <laughs> not even. People would just rather diddy mouth in the opposite direction. Do you think that um, the kickback from the Cali trial has made any real difference here in practical terms, or is it just something you talk about? One time we had uh, approximately 10 VC running around our, we were on top of a large hill, and we could see two or three groups of them with weapons running around. And we, uh, everyone was afraid to open fire on them. We tried to get clearance. We didn't know it. We'd been granted clearance from the CEO, but uh, the RTO was so busy and foreign other platoons out there that there were VC in the area, and they just forgot about it in the excitement. So we never got the word to shoot them. And they just walked through a grove of trees with their weapons and came out the other side, leading water buffalo, and kept on going. So they got away, and they're still there to shoot us the next time. I mean, that sort of thing. It makes you hesitate when you shouldn't hesitate. When you see an enemy of the weapon, you should be no question that you should be allowed to shoot him. As far as that's concerned, they have, you know, an awful lot of rules and regulations, and uh, it's pretty foolish. I mean, uh, check fire zone, control fire zone, seeing the enemy, not being able to shoot him, no. It's rather foolish. Why give them the chance when you can get them there? How do you all get on with the Vietnamese civilians when you meet them? Pacified civilian. We have a good relationship, I would say. You know, so. And of course, there's a civilian we meet out here. Of course, our main objective is to annihilate it. Here we're in a free fire zone. Oh, yeah. So any civilian you meet, you've got to reckon is Viet Cong. How do you feel when you get orders to move a bunch of civilians out of a village or something like that? Does it bother you, or um, is it just part of the job? It's just like a game, really. One day we rounded up uh, 200 prisoners. We burned down every hooch we could find. Mama sons, babies, didn't matter if they were sick or what. Well, we sick people we left behind, that's right. We didn't uh, bother them too much. Killed off all the animals, or drove them away. Then uh, they couldn't get enough helicopters out to lift these people out and evacuate them to a pacified area, so they uh, turned them all loose but 21 of them. And they went back to their uh, trampled over gardens, their dead animals, and their burned down hooches. I imagine now if they weren't a pro CB VC before, they are now. What do you feel you're fighting for now? Just survival, go home. Just, well, <laughs> just to make it home and get out of here and get out of the army and start yeah. living a normal life where you don't crawl around on the ground, you're not dirty every day, and you know, don't have to worry about getting shot or maybe shooting somebody or can blow it up in a booby trap or something like that. Also, uh, Just normal life. I would also like to uh, try to get a small element. Lieutenant Borison has not only got to keep these men fighting, whether they're in the mood for it or not. He's got to hold them tight in hand in situations where it's hard to see who the enemy is and where each man is carrying in his hand enough firepower to blow apart a dozen people in less time than it takes to pass on an order but he's far more popular with the conscripts who depend on him than many other field officers in Vietnam. In an army in which discipline has always been lax by most standards, he believes in imposing his personality firmly on his company. He knew Cali, and he thinks he was a weak officer. It uh, seems to me that it was a, a condition on the spot. It was a mental frame of mind the people were in at the time. It was... Uh, the loss due to booby traps, a, a morale lowering factor. Uh, possibly they lost some of their best buddies and uh, they saw no reason for it. 
But you've had the same thing happen to your company. You've had people lost in booby traps. You've taken quite heavy casualties in the company. And you don't seem to have problems of this kind. Why? I would like to think it's because of my own command influence that uh, I keep tabs with each individual in the company. I know what his mental frame of mind is. And if I see something uh, brewing of that nature, I, I uh, discuss it with him to get him back on an even keel so we can complete our mission. What sort of factors have to go through your mind if you're approaching a Vietnamese village and you take fire from it? Number of people, the volume of fire, uh, the extent of your casualties, uh, the, the tactical benefit of uh, perhaps annihilating or just merely uh, returning fire to the village. Uh, civilians, of course, are, are a big question. Uh, you must estimate first approximately how many people are there. If you can see anybody moving, uh, sometimes it's very hard. They hide in holes. You won't be able to see them until you're right on top of them. But these are some of the factors that you have to use. Do you feel as a career soldier that it's right that you as a company commander and your platoon commanders must be held personally accountable for their actions in any sort of situation that arises? Well, as far as I know, every war uh, that the commander has always been held responsible. Uh, it's, it's just the same now as it always has been. Uh, I think someone in the unit has to be accountable and has to have the, the final answer to what happens or what doesn't happen with that unit. And if it's not going to be the commanding officer, then they, they no longer need commanding officers. Do you want us to set up back in here or, or get in. closer to the river? No, I want you to set back in here. And tomorrow, Planning yet another patrol to the site of a village for yet another day, Borison is staying with one of his platoons because he's got yet another kind of problem to face. He's here partly to keep an eye on its commander. Lieutenant Evangelino believes his platoon should stick to fighting with fair weapons, rifles and machine guns, and urges them to avoid all the grotesque gadgetry of claymore mines and Mickey Mouse's, booby traps and tripwires. If he doesn't change his mind, Borison will unstick him. But he thinks he'll come to his senses pretty quick. Okay. They come to a very quick realization of uh, exactly what their commitment is going to be. And uh, I've seen, I have seen the individuals come to me with this question in mind. But after a very short period of time, the first few rounds of flying over their heads, they make up their mind very quickly. These men like Borison because they think he can keep them alive. But even more, perhaps, because he's so obviously in charge. There are too many weak men taking too many life or death decisions here. And it's some of them, perhaps, who make themselves hated by their men because they compensate with unpredictable displays of attacking spirit. Lots of times, I myself have stuck my neck out, you know, to chew out an officer because I think he's... You know, we might do something to inflict injury upon myself or one of my friends. Right, there was an incident like that where, where we had a relatively new CO and he wanted to impress the colonel that he was Aggressive. adequate in his position. And from the way I understand, he begged the colonel to let him take this mission from, from a PFs, you know, in other words, from the Arvins. And we didn't venture more than half a mile into it and we hit a booby trap and lost 10 people. So then what was left of us, we turned around and came back. So nothing was accomplished and, and we lost good people. Lives and legs, you know. Lives. Every company in our battalions had booby traps in that exact same place. In fact, after that, we went back there again and lost uh, two more people in the exact same location for nothing. Now, they've marched all morning to reach a village, and arriving, they've found nothing but a few patches on the ground to show where once there were huts, a handful of banana trees, and some derelict fields. Another day spent in hot pursuit of a war most of them would really rather not catch up with. Exactly how you want to conduct this out here. Uh, do you want me to continue to uh, uh, press on back toward uh, Hotel Delta, or do you want me to uh, concentrate in any, any principal direction? Uh, this is 4-7, uh, Roger. Uh, what you satisfied that you search that area? Come down along the south uh, west, and uh, we'll get you a new mission from there. 
Well, Roger, real fine. Okay, about uh, two more deltas in this area should uh, wrap it up uh, sufficiently well that uh, we can assure ourselves that uh, uh, it's been taken care of. The most exciting discovery they've made here is a beach, a place where they can take a rest while they count the days between Hep Duck and a ticket out of Alpha Company. They may go home, perhaps, to some place where you don't have to fire even the harmless hillside before you can take a swim. 